Play game solitaire mega tournament where we are going to try again to play Origins: How We Became Human. This time, I don't think there's going to be any problems. We're just going to do this, and it's going to be a lot of fun because I, I love this game. I really do. And it's been a while since I played it, and I've not played it. I don't know if I played it with these particular people. So who do we got playing here? There we go. It's going to be tricky in this format because I have a lot to capture with this camera. And I don't want it too far out, right? Because then you can't really see any detail. I haven't, it's very difficult to zoom using this. So this is not the ideal way to do this. But we're experimenting with a new medium for us and just seeing what we can do with it. We were going to do music for this, um, but I really wanted people to be able to participate in making that music using the sound commands that you can do with the, the chat bot that's part of this. Um, there's not people watching this so who want to do that. So that's just not something we've been able to do. So maybe sometime in the future we will try again to make music via Twitch just by um, playing what we like kind of overdubbing rather than multi-tracking it. So we play what we did last time and then add to it um, just using the, the audio coming through the computer. Okay, so we have to decide who's going to be what here. Um, I think I'll just mix them up. We got Smudge, Cowboy, Watermelon, Smudge, Sid, Kaz, and Cat, and that's it. Playing a full five-player game, Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, Origins, How We Became Human. So let's see who we get. And there we go. Okay, we got Watermelon. So who are our sides and what's different about them? We have the... Um, Peking Man down there. We have the D -D -D Neanderthal. The Hobbits. Or the small people. And this is using like old old information. So there's been other species of human found. The, the game, it's not a pure simulation, but it's still really interesting. Cro-Magnon here. And then on the far left, the blue, we have the archaic Homo sapiens, who are alpha. So we have alpha, curious, herding, nurturing, and possessive. So let's think about Watermelon here. She's an auditor. Childhood nickname Watermelon. Her secret fantasy is to be a famous actress. She's writing a cookbook. Uh, her pet peeve is Boston Drivers. She liked to meet Katherine Hepburn. Personal motto, c'est la vie. Most proud of getting her MBA without a bachelor's degree. Reputation high school is bookworm, determined, creative, energetic. So, the cookbook is nurturing, but the other stuff really isn't. Is there a sound? Oh. Um, herding, that's not a say la vie thing to herd. Curious might work. Determined, creative, energetic. Um, I don't think she's alpha. She's maybe a little possessive, but I think we're going to put her on as the white team here, the Cro-Magnon. A lot of multitasking in this process, which I'm terrible at, so I forgive me. You see the white? There she is, and she's down there. Yeah, we're also space constrained because we have a computer on the table and blah, 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 blah. All right, we're not gonna complain, we're just gonna do it. Let's see who we have next. I don't know if you can tell that my eyes are closed. All right, we got Cowboy. Okay, Cowboy just oozes personality. Truck driver, coast to coast, Cowboy. Secret fantasy to someday have my truck paid for and be out of the hole. Always late, never on time. Tourists going too slow, chapped lips. That's his pet peeve. He'd like to meet the old fellow. Personal motto, gotta go. Miles to put behind me. Most proud of his wife and his truck. Uh, reputation in high school, bad. Three words that describe him are good, bad, always late. So I'm leaning towards possessive with him. Um, yeah, I think we'll have him be possessive. And just so you can see, there he is. All right. Next. Closing my eyes. Closing my eyes. Eyes are totally closed. All right, we got Sid. Sid is a travel agent. 
Her childhood nickname is Sid. She'd like to marry Mel Gibson. She can fl remember this is like 1990, right? Maybe 1989. I forget the exact year. So it's a different Mel Gibson back then than the one we know today. An unusual fact is she can flip her tongue upside down. Pet peeve is driving in traffic. She'd like to meet Tom Cruise. That's interesting. She'd like to meet Tom Cruise, but marry Mel Gibson. So maybe she already knows Mel Gibson. Could be. Personal motto: Shut up. Most proud of her waist. Reputation in high school, someone who liked to skip classes. She's sweet, smart, and cute. Um, I think we're gonna put her on the, we're gonna put her on the alpha. Those are kind of alpha traits. Kind of doing what she wants. Okay, we're down to two. <laughs> All right, Smudge. Well, now, it's a little tricky here because I know Kaz and Kaz is the other one, and she's like the only real people card where that has a real person holding a baby. So I feel like she needs to be nurturing. Um, let's see if Smudge will fit with hurting. I mean, it's, technically, he gets to pick first. I kind of do these in a mix format where they get to choose, but I also try to kind of steer them towards what I think works best for them. Um, he's a mall Santa. Childhood nickname Smudge to use Ronald Reagan as a ventriloquist dummy is his secret fantasy. An unusual fact is he saw himself this morning on a milk carton. Pet peeve state troopers who pull him over to look at his wife. Uh, he'd like to meet his dad. Personal motto, can't drive 55, the car shakes at 40. Most proud of a 1987 dwarf chop tossing championship that he won. Um, yeah, I think the Hobbit will work really well for him. Least likely to survive senior year, birth control poster child. Yeah, I think we'll have him be hurting, and that'll leave Kaz and Kat. I guess I'll read her just to be completest about it. Uh, Kaz and Kat marketing research, childhood, I don't need to read that. Secret fantasy to see every country on every continent. Unusual fact, abandoned Citrion. I never know how to pronounce that word. I think it's a kind of car. In Frankfurt, main, main airport due to terrorist threat. Pet peeve cigarettes. She'd like to meet Linda Ellerby. Personal motto, let it happen. Most proud of her two children. Reputation in high school, voted most naive. Three words that describe her are outgoing, stubborn, and outspoken. All right, that's all we need to do to play. Um, I'm just going to start playing. I don't think I'm going to describe the game too much. If you have a question, you're welcome to ask, and then I will describe the game too much. All right, so we're going to start with Sid here. She has one innovation action. And I kind of have to re-familiarize myself with this game because I haven't played it since I last filmed it. So we're going to, each person's turn, they're going to do innovation actions, resolve catastrophes, play cards down to hand size, which is equal to their administration plus one, I believe. i got to remember that. I used to know, have these rules down pretty well. Uh, stability roll, see if they're in chaos. Uh, population actions, resolve sieges. Resolve starvation hexes. So let's take a look at hand size. Um, this is an interesting rule book because they mix the German rules with the English rules. Um, innovation, so I'll play cards. Player's hand size is equal to one plus the rank of his best information card. Okay, it's not administration. Administration helps with Chaos rolls. Culture helps with, um, lets you do acculturation, I guess. Yeah. Uh, which you get to get things, I think, from people with a lower culture. This will come back to me, I think. But sometimes you got to just jump into it. You don't have to reread the rules. It'll trust that you know it somewhere, even if you don't know it right here. Or right here. It's in here somewhere. Information is what lets you hold more cards. So, um, what is she? What can she do? She has the hand, so this is going to depend on her brain map. I'm not going to show you her brain map because you can't really see it over there. But here you see a brain map. These are showing, so she can. Uh, she has access to the hand and the acorn on hers. Um, so she gets to draw a new card. Not everyone gets to do that, and the acorn's not going to let her do anything. So basically, she's going to draw a card with her one innovation action. Um, and then there's no catastrophes on the card, so we're not going to do that. 
play cards down to hand size. Now she can't play this card for the cards have two two halves. I know I said I want to explain stuff, but it kind of helps me to remember it by saying it out loud. This lets her encephalize, like open up a part of her brain, and this lets her reset an elder. She can't do this part. She can't do this, which would let her encephalize her um, uh, acorn part of her brain that's already encephalized. So that doesn't matter. But it does let her do a fecundity decrease. Um, does she want to do that now or save it? Because this left-hand side is also nice. Oh, she can do the left-hand side. Um, she does a fecundity decrease. She would get two innovation actions next turn, so that seems like a better move right now. I think she'll just go ahead and do that. It's kind of a standard move in the game since we're kind of just starting. But that would do, I'm just showing you on this mat, even though she's blue, is it moves this down to here. Okay, so that allows more cubes to be used with population actions without going into chaos. Uh, cubes from here can go onto the map, but if you have too much population, then you can go into chaos, which you don't want in this, at this time, sometimes you do in the game, but not right now. One of the great things about this game is everything's situational, you never, you know, you can, you can really play with it. Um, so she's going to do that, she's going to have two innovation actions on her next turn. Uh, no stability roll. Uh, population actions. Okay, so here she can, she could do acculturation, but she doesn't have a higher culture than other people. I think that's what she needs to have. Um, population increase, that might be what she wants to do. All right, so she's up here. Let's take a look at our map. She's blue right here. Um, she could migrate or probably what she wants to do is get a new cube on the board. So she'll put this cube here, and it's important, it's going to start here, but it's going to have to move five spaces, and she can't really share a hex with anyone else, or that cube's going to die off, because of what her uh, footprint is. That's kind of their, their agricultural infrastructure. Um, it's an ice age right now, so I'm looking at our climate cards. These can change, the climate can change throughout the game. It's an ice age right now, so she can't go through white spaces, but there are these like kind of semi-water, semi like clear spaces or gray spaces. Those are, are she can walk on now because it's ice. Um, it's a parkland climate, so that means she can go, she can be in green, green spaces and that's okay. Um, and the desert is a savanna, so it's habitable, She's it's okay. If it becomes a desert, then that's bad for her if she's there. So where does she want to go? Um, I think she'd like to expand over here. Seems like a good idea by the Arak cow. So let's see, can she do it? She can't go across there. She can go across here because of the ice bridge. So she can go one, two, three, four, five. That'll get her right there. That's an alpha move. The Arak cow is a nice one to, to be able to domesticate. Usually early on you want to be able to domesticate something and the Arak cow is easier to domesticate. So let's move on to Watermelon. There's no sieges or anything for her. These first few turns are going to be pretty simple. Watermelon cannot exhibit novel behavior. If you look here, she's got the um, at symbol. I don't know what the symbol is. It's like a zero with a, it's this symbol here, um, uncovered, and she has, oh no, she can do novel behavior. So she has to, sorry, I, I'm multitasking so much that I don't take in the information of the game. That's why I, this is a, I almost decided to just film this one where I can stop and think about things and then talk, but I want to be able to, to work with this format more, and this is what I need to do if I want to do that. Um, so... Does she want this card? Because she can borrow it, right? Does she have that one? Yeah, she can imitate. She's white down here. She could imitate and take this card, or she could um, draw a new card. I think she, I think she wants to draw a new card. Okay, here we have, so this is kind of nice, except she doesn't have her hand exposed because it would give her some maritime ability. That would let her raft on these like um, red spaces here. Um, she could also do a fecundity decrease. 
And this thing, oh, what does that thing do? That lets you take cards from people's piles that are higher than yours. So I think she might just save this card for now. She does have a hand size of one, so she doesn't have to play it. Um, Cause she would like to get this, this boat thing. Now for her population actions, I think she's gonna, she wants to get out of the Southern Horn of Africa. She's gonna be risking, um, she's gonna be risking trouble later via chaos, but she risks more trouble if she doesn't leave, I think. So one, two, three, four, five, it's stuck in desert. An interesting strategy I've actually done in the past with the crow magnets in a, a pose play is there's this, there's this one action that you rarely do in the game called um, Silverback. It adds plus two your, to your stability roll. It totally stuffs your innovation track, so that means you have fecundity increases. So the, the stuff from your lower track here will go up to your innovation track, which generally you don't want. It's going to make it more likely you go into chaos, but it adds plus two to your chaos roll. Um, and then you just go up here and you kill this guy. Uh, with your population action and you kill yourself too but then you start to like since your innovation track quickly comes becomes full the things you kill um, your innovation track quickly becomes full so the you kill yourself and you start like filling back in your population thing it's a way to bust out of Africa because otherwise you're in the watermelon didn't do that so now she's kind of stuck um, she could still just kill that guy anyway and kill herself or else, what are her other options? One, two, three, four, five. She could be here, but then she risks it turning into desert. And if it turns into desert, then that, that person will just die out. I think she might do that anyway, though. So she's going to go there. Not a great first turn for watermelon. I don't think it's not what I would do. But maybe she's better than me. Who knows? Um, all right, Smudge's turn. Smudge has Smudge can only imitate. That's all he can do. So he pretty much has to take this card for his innovation action. The the only card that's in a discard pile um, that Sid used. And this is actually a better card for him because it does. Um, free up his, it encephalizes his nature stuff. So, oh, and he gets two innovation actions. Unfortunately, there aren't two cards for him to take. Does he want to do something else? So he can't play this yet. I should put this back. So he, he took that card as an action because we got to do all this before he plays the cards. So he could, what if he could silver back? Because he has a problem. So he's the hobbits over here. I don't know if you can see that color green. Maybe I should increase the light. Does that help? Yeah, I think that helps. All right. So he wants to get out of, out of here before he's stuck. Because if the Ice Age ends while he's down here, he can be stuck for a while. Um, one, two, three, four, five. So you could silver back, get there. Um, But he wants to be able to kill the guy. One, two, three, four, five. And he won't have a... Uh, well, actually, with Silverback, he would have another population action. So then he could, he could like, enslave Peking Man on the first turn. Which might be kind of cool. Let's try it. Okay. So he's going to Silverback for his second action. That puts these two cubes up. And then he is going to play this card. He's doing it a little different than I would. I would probably like hold on to the card until later. Get a bunch of fecundity decreases in a row after you do the murdering. But he's doing it this way. Then he has two population actions. The first one he's gonna go um, one, two, three, four, five. Now he could spawn a new guy, 
or just um, kill the guy with this guy. I think he's going to spawn a new guy because he wants the position out there. And then just go bonk. They both die. That sucks for Peking Man. Now, Peking Man is enslaved. So what that looks like is we go over to, I think, this track here. Let me put this on there. Now, they're in a special relationship where they each kind of benefit from each other's um, technological advances. Uh, but Peking Man can't really have a presence on the map unless Smudge gets a city. So that's where we're looking at. Peking Man is cowboy. All right, Kaz and Cat's turn. Yep. Um, Kaz and Cat can come up with novel behavior. She can draw a card. Um, and she can copy. She's up here. Um, she might want to just take this card. Because it would give her a fecundity decrease and encephalize her acorn. Look at her, her data. Marketing research. Cat liking cat. Every country in the country. Cigarettes, let the LRB, let it happen. Two children, voted most naive, outgoing, stubborn, outspoken. Um, I think, so what's her eventual goal? Where would she want to go in her population actions? I mean, a common thing for the Neanderthal is to just go over here. One, two, three, and I can't go over here. Four. Uh, yeah, you can't really go over there. She's kind of hemmed in. One, two, three, four, five. Just by virtue of the turn order, she's kind of stuck there. Um, so if she goes here, she dies out from starvation. If she... She needs to get to this spot. Oh, she can get there. One, two, three, four. Yeah, right there. That's where she wants to be. So that's okay. She can just kind of have a standard turn. We won't do anything fancy. Now, does she want to draw a new card or does she want to take one? I think she'll draw a new card to get some more innovation actions next turn because she, if she encephalizes, that's going to make it more difficult. Uh, there we go. Let's see that now. Okay. So she needs some language ability and some nature ability. She has neither of those to do this. This lets her domesticate a plant, which is great. And this is useless. So she's just going to hold on to this card until this thing is, she can meet this requirement. Um, and then do like we said before. One, two, three, four. Just get a new person over there. Get some population on the map. Free up space with these cubes. All right. Now, uh, Peking Man can't really do much. That's Cowboy here. Uh, he's not going to have any map presence. No population actions, really. Uh, but he can do novel behavior. Now, he's interesting. He usually starts the game just being able to do novel behavior, uh, not being able to copy, uh, un unlike the, the Hobbit, who can just copy but not do novel behavior. Novel behavior is drawing a card in this game. Uh, normally, he has two innovation actions, but since he, he got killed, that clogged up his innovation track. See, actions two, actions one. Um... So basically all he can do is draw a card. There's no other choice for Cowboy right now, I mean, unless he doesn't want to do anything. Now this is a nice card if he were on the map because it would give him military dominance, um, but it would require an acorn to do it. I don't know that he wants to, to play this one yet because someone else could take this and then have military dominance. However, maybe he does. Maybe he wants someone to be able to have military dominance to be able to free him from his hobbit slavery. The person who would want would be the Alpha Sid. Is Cowboy thinking about that? Or is he thinking about food for sex? I don't think Cowboy's going to stress about it. He's just going to go out and play it. Food for sex, get that fecundity decrease, and then he's going to get two things in the path, or two, uh, two actions next time. Also, an another good reason not to save this for himself is his enslaver would also get that same increase, which he does not want. I'm going to take a quick break and come back in a second.
All right, we are back. Thanks for your patience. Um, if you're watching this later and this is just like unwatchable, like you can't really tell what's going on, let me know in the next one I will just do with a regular camera, which I can like close in and do all that stuff and not do it on here. Do it on YouTube instead, if that works better for you. Um, all right, let's go on for our second turn. And we're going back to Sid. Sid. Lighting's terrible. Um, Sid way over there. I'll let you see this view for a little bit because then you can see these cards. That's fun. We have our era draw decks. Era four is up here. We're gonna go through that. That's the expansion. Um, Sid gets two actions. She can, she can't copy. She just has to draw cards essentially. Um, and yeah, I think she's just gonna be drawing cards. So we'll draw this card. Uh, it's a pretty nice one. It gives her some immunology and her hand's already done, but she can't use it. So she could use it for a fecundity decrease, sham menstruation. Um, just pretend like you're menstruating so that... Oh, okay. So here we have Yellowstone blowing up. This is something that's changed in some rules of the game, uh, some optional rules, I think, where you can... The Yellowstone does something else because Yellowstone blows up over here, right? And no one's there at this point in the game. It's pretty hard to get to the new world this early. I don't know if it's, is it possible? Yeah, I guess it's possible. Maybe not by this turn though. Um, so this is a card she could auction. No one has any elders. So let me look at auctions real quick. I know the tie goes to whoever has something. But let's find out. And this is an information card, tally stick, so it's worth points to her. It's, it's a somewhat asymmetrical game, not like super asymmetrical, but somewhat asymmetrical in that you, you do have like slightly different starting abilities and, um, you know, starting locations, and then you get points based on different things. So, okay. All players that have attained a card's era level may participate in an auction for it. Each player may call out his bid at any time, not exceeding his number of producer elders. No one has any elders. The minimum bid is one. Yeah, so the minimum bid is one, so she can't do anything with that. So that means she's going to want to play this other card here because her hand size is one, right? So she can't get that. She'll go ahead and play that. I want to say meld because of innovation and there's an innovation track in this. I'll say she melds that, gets the sham menstruation, a fecundity decrease for Sid. Does she want to do any population actions? She has one. Um, she could afford to start like pushing out someone because she's got room on her innovation track uh, just to kind of claim some space or get them out. Does she want to mess with the hobbits? Or she could pull north and be by these horses here. Um, I think she wants to pull north and go by the horses. Yeah, I think that's good. Um, that would be it for her. Yellowstone did blow up. Uh, even though she didn't play the card, she would have had to reveal that and show them. So they know she has this card, uh, but it didn't do anything. All right, over to Watermelon. Watermelon has one innovation action. Um, she has she risks going into chaos if she doesn't decrease her fecundity at this point. So she might go ahead and do the female coyness. Um, but first she needs to copy someone's card. Um, this one's pretty good. I think she's going to go ahead and take this card from Sid's. It's got the immunology and the encephalization of something she hasn't encephalized, and she has this prerequisite. <clears throat> so she'll do that, um, encephalize her hand, and boost up her immunology. And then she's going to go 
go ahead and play this to boost up her rafts. She's going for some technology here. She could have done a fecundity decrease to keep from going into chaos, but she, so now she has to roll for chaos, which I need to die for. This is my little container that I put in this box. This box is uh, uh, my Origins How We Became Human box has both Origins and American Megafauna in it. That's this, because there's a game you can play with them together called, um, is it Animal Farm? It's not quite, it doesn't quite work. You kind of have to, you have to fudge it. There's, the, the rules are incomplete. Um, but it's fun to try if you have both games. All right, so if she gets a one, she goes into chaos. Nope, she's good. All right, good for her. And now population action. She wants to get this person off of the desert. I think she can keep this one here. She could also go to this island, which wouldn't be bad. She doesn't want to spawn new population right now because she doesn't want to go into chaos. She has one population action. Um... I think she'll go ahead and just move this fellow off of the desert and just leave it as is. Over to the Hobbit, our slave master. Slavery is not a bad thing in this game. I mean, it, it is and it isn't. Uh, you can you can gain as a slave, just if you, especially if you can work with your slave master. But it it, it does have problems. You kind of have to. It's a new situation. You kind of have to work. Um, all right. So Smudge is <laughs> he's got terrible, terrible um, population problems. Very near to chaos here. Um, a one or a two will do it unless he he could silver back, um, or he could start working on his uh, doing some fecundity decreases. Then he then he'd have like a one in six instead of a two in six chance of going into chaos. Um, Well, let's see. So he can only copy, so, which means he can either take this one over there, food for sex, or he can take this one, which would just, well, he could get the, the maritime. Oh, no, I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah, which would, so basically he gets a fecundity decrease either way. I think he will, or he could instead just silverback. I think he's gonna he's gonna do the old silverback maneuver. And just be a little bit of a jerk. This is this is like a so when I first started playing this game, silverback seemed like it had no, no purpose to me. Um but there are this is like a, a, there's a way, I think, to make it work for you just by doing this. So he takes this population over here. One, two, three, four, five, bonks this cube. They both die. And so the cube, since his innovation track is full, will just go right back down to the population track. So it hurts your opponent, but kind of helps you at the same time. So he has two more actions. And he can just do the same thing again. Oh, he has, and he doesn't have to roll for chaos since he's silverback. That added plus two, which was enough. Um, and he can't get to this other one. One, two, three, four, five. He can get there and then use another action to bonk it. And just kind of push people out so that he kind of has the whole area over here. Um, one, two, three, four, five. And then for the next one, He'll just go one, bonk them both. So he really just bothered Sid a bunch. Knocked two of her cubes off into her innovation track. That's going to go bring us over to Cat as in Cat. Who? That's right. She can do novel behavior or copy. Hmm. She gets one innovation action. We're looking at some fecundity decreases. She could boost up her maritime. Kaz and Cat 
could use the maritime. I think she wants to take the maritime card, boost up her, it's a raft, boost her maritime up. And then she can, she has to roll for chaos. So there's all these phases that you're supposed to go through, but a lot of times you don't have to go through them all unless it's important and you kind of just get the flow and it all makes sense. Four is okay. Um, now, does she want to create new population? She would like to go east towards that back tree and camel. Oh, I hear my family's home. Uh, let me, I'm going to have to go fast here. Um, my son's been gone for a day, so I haven't seen him in a while, so I should go greet him. Uh, but I'll just have her, she's going to risk it, send one over to this back tree and camel, even though Smudge is kind of being an alpha dog. And that'll take us to our slave here, Cowboy. He gets two innovation actions. He can only draw. Okay, so here we have... Some climate change that's going to happen and this card is not going to be auctioned probably and then we have this card here so he's going to play this card for the for the encephalization and the fecundity decrease that gets rid of all of his population actions which is actually okay because he can't do anything with his population actions anyway Where's his acorn? Why can't I not find his acorn? Does he not have an acorn? Oh, his acorn's already showing. God. Foolish. Sorry. Um... Yeah, not great. Not a great card for him, but that's going to do it. Uh, except we do have to roll for some climate change. That's what this does. Five, that's going to be the... So the parkland is now like uninhabitable, unless you have the right kind of technology, which nobody does. So it's good he got out of there when he did, the hobbit smudge, because this hobbit would be trapped if he didn't get out there and i've seen games where you are trapped for a very very long time all right that's going to do it for this edition of the real people multi-game solitary mega tournament where we're playing origins how it became human one of my favorite games um thanks for joining me if you prefer the handheld video format let me know because i can understand it for a game as large as this um but it's easier for me to do it in this format easier in, in terms of time uh, but kind of hard on, on the ground because you have to move the camera, you have to talk, you have to play the game all at once. You kind of have to keep talking constantly. All right. Well, thank you and goodbye.